Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another fixture form. If you want to get involved, we need three reps at 70% high definition filmed horizontally sent to ask M I K K E at gmail.com. That's ask Mike with two K's at gmail.com. And you may be selected for our next fixture form video. We got some conventional pulls to start off the day. My man, if we can, again, with the angles, we need a direct side angle and maybe a direct front angle. Uh, this is a little bit behind, so those plates cover up your body, so it's hard to see. But um, from what I can see right here, everything looks really, really solid, man. Back's in a really good position. Uh, looks like you're loading up those hamstrings. Next in a good spot. It seems like the barbell is close to you. Um, I, I prefer... People spend a little bit more time on the ground in between sets, although that one's a little bit better, even though we are slow motion. Uh, sometimes just a touch and go rep uh, will, one, get you out of position, and two, you obviously get the momentum, whether you're using bumpers or not, and it will take away some of that strength or make it easier at the bottom, you know, one, two, maybe even a foot off of the ground. And we want to make training more difficult, especially if we're trying to increase our one rep max, or even if we're trying to just build muscle, what we want to do is make our form repeatable for every movement. So then if we're progressively overloading, we're trying to lift more weight, more reps, more sets, we'll know because we're setting a standard and then we know if we actually improve or if we end up just actually cheating the exercise more and more, right? To build more strength, more muscle, we need more sets, more reps. But if we're uh, cheating the movement in between to get that advantage, then we may not be building the muscle or the strength that we want. Uh, from the form looks uh, front, my man, it actually looks really, really solid. The bar is nice and close on your body. As we said before, back's in a good position. Uh, shoulders are directly over the barbell. Not much to critique right there, to be honest. A little garage workout. Got the running shorts, shirt off, summertime. Summer, summer, summertime, summertime. That's the uh, the the best cool in the gang slash Will Smith remix I could do for you guys. If, if you want me to be a YouTube rapper, just comment below. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe come out with a verse, maybe, maybe even a whole album. I mean, if Kanye can come out with a seven-song album, I could come out with a three-song album and call it an album, and, and maybe we could hit some charts. I've always wanted to be a hip-hop artist. Another really uh, solid pull here. It looks like you're yanking on it just a little bit. Uh, so what I'd like to see, again, we want heavy hands. So we want, you know, if you have 100, let's say you have, oh, it's kilos, man, getting me confused. Let's say you have 200 pounds on the bar. I want like 50 of those pounds in your hands pulling down on you before you hit the gas and, and pull as hard as you can. What we want is tension throughout our, our, our system. So we want tension in our lats and our back and our hamstrings into the ground. If you start to jerk on the bar too much, one, it could pull you out of position. Hips may rise early, body weight goes in front of the bar, and now you're in a less advantageous position to pull maximal loads. Number two, obviously we're putting at risk a little bit of our back uh, and our bicep. Going from zero to 100 and trying to lift a heavy weight in a jerking motion will raise the risk of injuries and obviously we want to get strong we want to get better in the gym we do not want to get injured even right there you're in a perfect position except there's no tension in the system i can tell even just how you're sitting there so from that position keep your hips where they are and start to fall back a little bit flex those lats you can even see your hair pop up and down in the slow-mo this slow-mo is actually really good um again it's not wrong but it's not optimal if we want to make our, ourselves repeatable so we can, again, have a standardized way to progressively overload over time. Two, we want to obviously get stronger and lift most efficiently so we don't get injured. Um, and that's going to be the big difference between jerking and, you know, the common term is pulling slack out of the bar. But a lot of people just say that term and, and don't explain it, right? We want that tension out of our system. We want to put a little bit of, uh, of pull into that bar before we slam on it. That, that rep might have been a little bit better. I don't know if it's any different or if it's just I've seen it so many times now that my... My eyes are going wild, but yeah, you're still jerking a little bit. Knees are a little bit too far forward, so maybe even hips a hair up, and then again, start to fall backwards. I do think that's a separate set, because here we go again with the slow-mo. Overall positioning is good, guys. You know, there's some basic rules we're looking with the conventional pull and even the sumo pull. We want we want to breathe and brace our midsection. Right? We want to breathe into our belly button, our sides, and our low back and really flex down, making ourselves as rigid as we can from our shoulders to our hips. We want our hips below our shoulders. Now, this is going to vary depending on how you're built in the deadlift, especially if you have a, a, a lot of mobility or long arms. You may look a little bit different. Two, we want our shoulders, or excuse me, I guess we're on number three. We want our shoulders directly over the bar. 
We want to get all the tension out of our system. And then from there, all I think about is pushing with my legs and pulling with my back. And that's both for the conventional and the sumo deadlift. Um, depending on the person, again, it will look slightly different if you have a little bit longer torso and shorter arms or, or shorter torso and longer, ar longer arms, whatever it might be. The hip position may look different, but the overall rules, the guidelines we're trying to follow are the same. So again, my man, really, really solid. We just need to get some tension in that system uh, before we start to yank on the bar. I think we have one more full speed. I don't know if we went up in weight um, or if it's still the same. Let's see what we got. Give it all you got. Give it all you got. Name that movie below and you will win an invisible balloon sent to you by a, a, a mailman that, that, that doesn't exist. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do enjoy the content, be sure to subscribe. Uh, smash that thumbs up button. We're dropping new videos Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. And I know it seems a little bit random, but ladies and gentlemen, I got a bunch of traveling, a bunch of vlogs, and a bunch of food on the way. Fitness is a part of my life. It'll always be a part of my life. It'll always be part of this channel. But we're going to be cruising around, hopefully share my experiences with you guys. we got Mama's Boys podcast trip heading to Texas coming up right now. Uh, and be sure to check out Mama's Boys podcast on iTunes. Two new episodes a week. It's with Omar Isaf, the one and only surf clam i think you guys will really enjoy it you know uh, the podcast is a great way for us to talk about things non-fitness we kind of ramble sometimes we talk about life sometimes we talk about business sometimes we talk serious sometimes we joke around uh, some hot topics or hot trend videos moving on to our next conventional polar let's see what we've got so this is a common mistake I see to it. It's not necessarily wrong again, but I don't think it's optimal. People will try to squat the weight up in a sense. So when he's dropping his hips to get to the bar, he's jamming his knees forward and over. Rather, I'd like to see you almost tilt backwards and lean back and get those hips behind the bar. The difference is going to be, one, there's going to be less tension in your hamstrings when you're jamming those knees forward. And two, your shoulders are going to end up over the bar. So a big cue that helps for me and I think many others is that, see right there, that's what I'm talking about. And so you can even see his shins are basically fighting his lats on where the bar needs to go. You want to pull that bar into you and you want your momentum almost heading backwards. A perfect bar path for a conventional pull is either straight up or even back towards you. So what I find is what we want is our shoulders directly over the bar, but a cue for my head is to get my body behind the barbell. Think about getting your body behind the barbell and not rolling your pelvis under you and jamming your knees forward. And that's going to be very common in both the conventional and the sumo. It is okay for your knees to go a little bit forward in the conventional and to have some positive shin angle. It's fine to use your quads to get the bar moving off the ground, but what's not optimal is to roll that pelvis underneath your back's going to be in a, a not optimal position most of the time, even though my man here keeps it pretty flat. And then two, again, your body weight's going to be moving forward. Momentum's going to be moving forward. Again, guys, if you can, send these horizontal so we don't get some footage that looks like this. But we've got more conventional poles. It's just a conventional day. You know what I mean? You know what the people say. You know what the people say. My friends, conventional is a little bit like fucking. In sumo, we got to make that love. There's not right or wrong to either one of them. It's just how it goes. Overall, looks really good, dude. Uh, hopefully, we got a side angle here because I'd like to see how low your hips get. Um, the bar seems like it's staying really, really close. From this angle, it looks like everything's in a really solid position. Uh, one thing, as always, guys, we want to make it repeatable. So as much as you can uh, focus on yourself, you can film yourself and, and review your own footage from the front and the side and just make sure that you're doing the same things over and over. Just like shooting a free throw uh, in basketball, just like going to the golf range in golf, you want each stroke, each shot to look the exact same. So then no matter what way you're lifting whether it's 50 percent 80 percent or 100 percent or going for a new pr those repeatable movements not only are ingrained in your brain ingrained in your body and all you can focus on is pushing that weight as hard as you can because you've practiced perfect form over and over so many times uh from from the front uh, again it is hard but it seems like you might be a little bit over the bar it's a common theme today uh, again we want our shoulders directly over the bar directly over the bar not in front of the bar so when you're looking straight down you almost want to um have an exact same line and right here it looks like uh you may be a little bit too far forward which again maybe you're jamming your knees forward to get into that position or we're not leaning far enough backwards you know we talk about kind of a teeter-totter effect where people talk about uh almost making that bar float uh hopefully this is the same gentleman i think the f the, f the gym looks different no uh dang it i think it's a different guy 
I think it's a different uh, gentleman we got here. But uh, for my man is in the back. Oh, no, it might be the same. Head position, hat looks the same. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm kind of right. I stand half right. What I want still is hips high, a hair higher, and start falling back. That's going to help, one, pull the slack out of the bar, two, load our hamstrings. By loading our hamstrings, we have to shift our weight backwards as rigid as our midsection could be and shift our, our, our hips backwards. And then two, that'll automatically put your shoulders in the optimal position to pull. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I appreciate you guys so much. Five videos a week. Tell your friends. Tell your mama. Tell your kids. Hide your wife. New videos Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm going to be back on the Twitch grind as soon as I get back from Texas. We got more vlogs, more food coming. Me and Omar are going to explore some Texas barbecue and hopefully share it with you guys. And again, Mama's Boys Podcast, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you want to check it out. Two new episodes a week. Thank you all for so much support. I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm out of here. <laughs>